Hello everyone, Gebatron here, and I want to talk about weapon discipline in tactical shooters and how a little bit of it can go a long way in games like Hell Let Loose, Squad, etc., where kills aren't as important as map or area control. You know, games where squad tactics and combat situations are on a larger scale or a more in-depth scale than other types of first-person shooter games. We will be going over two different clips. The first one is in a controlled environment, and the second one is gameplay straight from a Hell Let Loose match. So what is weapon discipline? In the context of what we are talking about here, weapon discipline is referring to your ability to see a target and understand that, depending on what your goals are, maybe it's not always the best idea to fire at that target. Sometimes not engaging the enemy is actually better and more in line with your goals. Here in our first example, we are observing to the south-southwest out of this building. We see a target pop out and I miss, so the target gets back into cover. Let's talk about the consequences of my lack of weapon discipline. First is that because I missed, our target was quickly able to get back into cover, meaning I don't have a second opportunity to fire. Second is I have now given my position away and let the enemy know that there is a presence here, which won't help out our teammates either. Third is now that the enemy knows we are here, they could potentially call in various types of support, making our job much harder. Additionally, it could make an advance on their position more difficult as they have had forewarning and time to prepare. So what may have been a better way? Here in this second example, I do not fire right away, and the enemy is tricked into thinking the approach is relatively safe. They expose themselves, and I fire. You'll notice I still miss, but now the enemy is completely exposed, giving me multiple opportunities to fire. So that is an immediate benefit to me, but what about any of our team in the area? We still gave our position away, but perhaps through some of the chaos, our enemy soldier lost some awareness and is at least a little inaccurate with their reporting. Not to mention we at least reduced the enemy strength by one. Our third example here is much like the last, but now because we let the enemy expose themselves before firing, not only have we drawn out the point man, but also some other squad members. This allows us to eliminate multiple targets, and the biggest benefit to this specific situation is that we can push the area they came from knowing that the enemy is down three soldiers. This gives us a potential numbers advantage as we push in and attempt to fire and assault their OP. Again, those examples were controlled. A big thanks to GLOW's members Wazowski, Wix, and Zarni for helping me out with that. This type of weapon discipline works best at the beginning of contact and becomes less viable as combat continues and draws out. That's important to keep in mind. Once combat is initiated, you're usually going to want to establish firepower superiority, but these types of ambush tactics achieved through weapon discipline can give you that extra slight edge in the beginning of an engagement. And there is a historical precedent for this type of action. The Germans specifically had what they called Schweige MG, or silent machine gun, where they open fire only at close proximity when the enemy cannot find cover during the assault anymore. I took this graphic from the video in the top right hand corner entitled German Defensive Tactics Eastern Front that was made by the Military History Visualize channel on YouTube. I'll link to both that video specifically and that channel in the description as I highly recommend you check it out if you are at all interested in World War II history. This next example comes directly from a match in Hell Let Loose. Here's our situation. We were defending Hugo's farm, which is down here, and our team just captured AA Network. This put us in a perfect position to move north and west to build some garrisons and eventually assault Braycourt Battery from the west. This path allowed us to skirt outside the normal traffic routes and avoid contact. My squad all understood what our situation was and were practicing weapon discipline. In this case, not firing on the enemy until necessary to help keep our movements and position unknown to the enemy. On top of this, we had the added benefit of friendly forces attacking the battery from the northwest, which was providing a distraction and establishing a front opposite of us. In other words, we had a perfect situation to sneak into the point to surprise and destroy the enemy as well as any of their spawns before they even knew what hit them.
All right, what do we see? Not a lot. Uh, I see some enemies across over there. Two enemies. Notice how we get into position and survey the area before moving in. This will help us plan our advance and may help us identify any spawns, enemies, defensive structures to avoid, etc. I recommend you always do this before an assault if possible. We got a lot of barricades out for break court there. Yeah, I see that. Boy, if they're not looking this way. They're all just crossing towards that barn. Let's let's see if we uh, can so move. I see them running. Let's see if we can move east along this uh, fence right here. Stay on yeah. the uh, the north side of it. I place the OP to help us sustain our attack if we are unsuccessful our first attempt. But keep an eye on this guy here. See some more of them crossing. Let's try not to alert them. Get a uh, tank left spawn, please. Yeah, I get you a tiger. Fuck and the then fuck. there's that fucking... guy. Yeah, I, that was like, why? There you go, sweetie. Why are you making the scene? Thank you. There is always one. He opens fire and gives our position away. Now I'm not calling Corporal Hank out here, as this type of play is pretty normal across the whole of the Hell Let Loose community, not to mention other tactical shooters. There was a lot of targets over there, and it can be hard to hold off in the face of so many potential kills. But this play did alert the enemy to our presence, and did get a lot of us killed. It had the potential to turn an easy play into an unsuccessful assault. Fortunately, we were able to overwhelm the enemy, and we did eventually take this point. So now that we ripped on poor Corporal Hank, let's rip on me a little bit. But why, Gebatron? You haven't done anything wrong, right? Anytime something goes wrong is a good time to evaluate your own role in it. I told my squad to stay quiet, but I didn't use proximity to make other players aware. So we can blame Corporal Hank all we want, but I bear some of the burden here too. I'm the officer that set this up. I'm an experienced player. I saw the opportunity and failed to communicate what I saw to the whole group around me. So you can learn from both of our mistakes. Moving on, even though this didn't work out perfectly for us, it still worked pretty well because the majority of us practiced weapon discipline and we were able to cover a lot of ground before our position was given up. So the point I'm trying to make with this video is that just because you see a target doesn't mean you have to shoot at that target. What are your goals? What do you risk by giving your position away? Would it be better to bypass a squad in order to sniff out their spawns? Is the weapon you have capable of taking out multiple targets quickly or not? Sometimes there are a lot of things to consider before pulling the trigger. Remember that a lot of these tactical shooters are won and lost by controlling territory and not necessarily by which team has more kills. If you can occupy ground without firing a shot, that is usually the best way to do it. That's it for this one. I hope you learned something new or at least got some fresh perspective. Big shout out to Wazowski, Wix, Zarni, and Purple Hippopotamus, all members of Glow's Hell Let Loose community. Check the description for a link to join Glow's Discord if you are looking for a community to join. Big shout out to the rest of Dog Squad. There will also be links down there to check out Military History Visualized and the video I pulled that Schweiga MG graphic from, as well as a PayPal link if you'd like to support the channel directly. Please do all the things that help the algorithm. Thank you so much for all your continuing support and see you in the next one.